Hey, if you're watching this part of the video, uh, this is a broadcast of uh, Instagram Live that happened on June 7th, um, 2021, and it's about flash photography. So let's wait for people to get here and we get started. I'm so excited. So excited to do this. So Jeff is in. Oh, people are joining. Look at that. Hi, ah, hey, Des, Brianna, Ray's over there, Jeff. Hey, buddy, how are you? Jeff was on a wedding at Duke Chap with me this weekend, helping out. Thank you. Hey, Des. Oh, I really want to go to Florida, Des. Come on. Let's get those numbers down there so we can go there and photograph, create some beautiful stuff over there. Oh, Paul. So do Yay. Rachel, everybody trying. That's Danny over there. Yay. Hey, babe. <laughs> oh, thank you guys for joining. This is really cool. I'm really, really excited to be here uh, talk to you about flash photography. So just let me know how, how, how does it sound? The sound looks all right. Light is good. Let me know here in the comments how if you guys can hear me okay. Um, so let me know here in the comments if you guys can, can hear me okay or, or if I need to bump up the sound or something. <clears throat> can you guys hear me all right? Can you hear me okay? Looks awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> hey, buddy. My friend Brandon. Michelle, Brianna. Yeah, so uh, let's get this going. So I'm waiting a little bit longer to see if somebody else comes up, but uh, we get a, get a good good number of people here. So how I hope you're having a great day today. Uh, it is being, it's being, uh, uh, compared to the other days, it's been mild here in North Carolina, in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, so which is kind of nice. Um, we've been busy, busy, busy with wedding season this year, it's been crazy, and I hope you're all busy with your photography and, and creating some beautiful stuff. So today we're going to talk anything photography, right? We're going to try to focus a little bit on flash photography, uh, and... The questions that I have, please ask questions. I want to make this as interactive as I can. Um, I don't want me to be lecturing here for, you know, for a long time. And, and no, let's make this interactive. Any questions that you have, let me know. Anything photography goes, uh, I'll try to focus a little bit more on flash photography, but anything photography goes, right? Um, for those of one who don't know me, um, I think most people know, but there might be one or two who don't know me. Who am I and why am I here talking to you on the phone? Uh, my name is Clay Souza, actually. Um, we're originally from Brazil. We lived in the United States for 20 plus years and about 12 years in North Carolina. Um, and I'm a wedding photographer. I also shoot families. I will shoot I photograph uh, high school seniors. The only thing that we don't photograph is a newborn, but everything else we do. Uh, hey, Anna. Um, but we, we focus, our main focus is weddings, right? We've been doing weddings for a few years now, and we have, it's been good for us. And uh, uh, it's amazing how flash, once I started incorporating flash photography on my photography, um, how everything changed. Uh, my payments got better and I was able to charge more for weddings. And, and I will tell you this, it, it's, it, there, is some, there is some people who resist a little bit about flash photography. Flash photography, uh, uh, <laughs> flash photography has this bad, bad vibe sometimes, but most of the time it's for people not knowing how to use flash. And this is what we want to do. We want to show you not only how to use flash, but why to use flash and um, and how to use it well. So you look at a picture that we don't really know what uh, if it was done with flash or not. So that's that's a big that's a big thing in our photography. So I've been doing weddings for a few years now, and I I start photography actually because uh, hey Marco. Uh, because of uh, motorcycle races. I'm a huge motorcycle racing fan. If you know me, you heard at some point me talking about motorcycle racing. Uh, I'm one of those people who gets up three in the morning just to watch practice uh, motorcycle racing, not even the race itself. So I follow everything I can. I know all the riders. I've been to several races, not racing, but 
uh, uh, photograph. And that's how I started actually. It's been like three years back. I was talking to a friend one time because I was going to go to Indianapolis to watch a race. And she said, well, I'll take some pictures. I want to see those pictures. And that time I didn't even own a camera. And I said, so I don't even have a camera. Uh, uh, um, and she lent me, she grabbed her camera and she gave me the semi-professional camera. It was, I remember this was a Canon T2i, a Rebel T2i. Who, who has had those? Uh, uh, and I said, I don't even know how to, how to dial those, all of those things here, what they mean. I, I had like never owned a camera in my life. I hate, up to this day still, hate having my picture taken. Uh, Brenda can state on that because he took some picture of us for our website. Um, so anyway, she dialed that to manual and gave it to me. Long story short, on a weekend from Thursday to Sunday, I took four, over 4,000 pictures. I was fascinated with what I was seeing behind the camera. Uh, and I just said it was like amazing. And I came back home like, for, yeah, the original Rebel DSLR. Those are good cameras, right, Michelle? Um, and I was really amazed by the pictures. They were not, I mean, compared to what, what I got like two, three years after that, they were not even great, but I was amazed how much fun I had. So I came back and returned, gave her the camera back. And the first thing I did, I went to Best Buy and bought a T2i, a Canon T2i. That's how I landed on Canon. And from there, I started doing like birds and sunset, sunrise, and I was happy and going to Indianapolis to watch my race and photographing and the big image started getting better. And, and I, uh, and then I started studying photography and, and, and I remember one of the biggest challenges for me was to photograph birds. I, I couldn't get the birds in focus because they move a lot and start studying and saying, I just had the kit lenses, which are fine, uh, but I need something better. And so we start on that. That's how it all started. So we, um, that, that, that was the beginning of everything. And I was happy doing my sunrise, my sunset, my birds and my races. And one day a friend of mine who is a, a professional photographer, called me and said, hey, do you want to shoot some models? And I said, no, I don't. I, I'm happy with my birds and my sunsets and sunrise. I don't want to deal with people. Uh, I don't even know how to photograph people. He said, oh, no, come over. I'll help you. We, you know, we, we'll do all right. I need some help here. And anyway, I said, well, uh, I, all right, let's do this, right? So I went over there and we, we just, you know, started photographing. And I was fascinated, fascinated by the number of things that I didn't know. <laughs> the number of things that I, I did not, I have no idea that I, I should know if I was going to take this uh, to a next level. And flash, posing, directing, you know, dealing with everything and lighting, and external life, two, three lights, I was like really overwhelmed. So, Needless to say, came back home, started studying, studying, studying. Now, so here we are, right? Um, so that, that that's my story. Uh, it's it's it started like a, probably most of most of uh, uh, um, most of you probably started as, as as a hobby and then turned into some money making kind of thing, right? So. Um, from all of the, the watching now, who, which ones, who, who is a natural light photographer in, on, on the group? So just, 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 uh, either, either, uh, uh, just type like I am a natural light photographer or just me so I can have an idea of who is there uh, and how much knowledge of flash you guys have. Um, throughout the course of this, of this live, I'm going to mention some products that, that I use on my daily day to day, right? So we're able to do both, yeah? Um, if you do both, let me know. If you do just flash, let me know. If you just natural light, let me know. Um, as I was saying, Michelle also do both, cool. So as I was saying, I'm gonna be mentioning some products. I have no affiliation at all. So Rachel is a natural light, have flash for receptions, cool. And watch which kind of, of photography you do, Rachel? Um, 
So just for me to, to know where we're gonna go with this. So which kind of photography you do? Hey, Dona Wanda, hello, hello, hello. Um, so I'm gonna be mentioning some products here. I have no affiliation with any of those companies. If this is just uh, Rachel does wedding. Brandon is a great wedding photographer in uh, Washington DC. You should follow him. Really good, really good guy. Uh, Aurea, hello Aurea. So we, uh, we're gonna be mentioning products here. So again, I have no affiliation with those companies. This is the things that I use on my daily photography. These are the products that I use and they have evolved through the years. I have been buying and selling stuff because they don't work or something better where I should have bought. And one of the things that I want to do is to help people who are at that point that they want to try flash, but that there's so much information out there today. There's so much stuff out there that where to start, right? I mean, it looks like every, every, everybody has a product today to sell us, uh, but what is good and what's not good. And of course, pricing is a big thing also. Um, but why use flash? Why, why, why do you want to use flash in your photography? I think there is a few things that we need to touch on that. One of them is you need to differentiate yourself from everybody else. Um, we photographers keep saying the market saturated, the market saturated, but the big question is what are you doing to differentiate yourself, right? Because if you're not, if you're a natural light photographer, and again, I'm not hating on natural light photography, no, no, uh, uh, no way. It's just, I use natural light also when it's needed, and it, it, it is, when the light is good, it's good enough. But if you play on that, on that pole, there's too many people in there. You, you compete on a most crowded part of photography, right? It's like charging $1,500 for a wedding. Everybody's on that, most people are on that, on that price range. You're competing with everybody. So when you, you start using flash, either to light your scenes or, or creatively, which is something that we're gonna talk about later, uh, you start to separate yourself from everybody else, right? Uh, but, it, 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 I mean, Jeff, is, Jeff was helping me on a, on a wedding this weekend. He said, you did a lot of natural light this weekend at Duke. I did, because the light was gorgeous, it was perfect. So there was no reason. I just shot flash when I needed to. We did some creative flash with gel and some to light. But most of the time, I did natural light. Uh, so being able to navigate to both worlds is awesome. Right? I do mentoring for, for, for upcoming photographers also. We do like local workshop and, 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 and photo walks. I mean, it's amazing the number of people who come to mentor and, and I ask them, oh, show me your five best images. And they go all the way to the beach and they come back, come back with a bunch of, of blown out skies. Right? It's like, okay, no, nothing wrong with that, but it's just, it could be better, right? It could capture that, that, uh, uh, um, the deep blue sky that you want. And flash photography is going to put you on any scene, any time, any time of the day, any time of the night, and you're going to be able to produce beautiful images. You just need to know how to dial things correctly and and make make, make beautiful art. But the main, main point for me is differentiate yourself from everybody else. Differentiate yourself, right? And when you have better pictures, it's clear you can charge more. The expectations are high, the pressure is high, but you can charge more. I remember when we started shooting weddings, we were on the $1,700, $1,800 range. Today, we are way over double that because my skills have improved and my pictures today, they are, they are more valuable because I use flash. Again, not only to light the subject, but also creatively. Well, Ray, Ray, Ray is doing some, doing some testimony there about my mentoring. We, he did a mentoring with me a uh, 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 few months back. And, and yeah, I mean, we sit down here and, and, and we, we go two days. We, we break down everything. We go into posing. But I'm not here to talk about my mentoring. So if you want to know about that, just send me a DM and we go in there. So, but thank you, Ray. 
Um, and if you're not using Flash today, I agree with a lot to hear why, why not? Because is it price? Is it um, fear of using Flash, not knowing what to do, right? Uh, what, what's keeping people from using Flash? Why, why does this thing that Flash photography is bad, is bad for you? Right? Uh, so I kind of want to know why people don't, and apparently here, most people are using Flash, and if you're using Flash to, are you, the ones using Flash, uh, do you use Flash just to light the scene, or using Flash creatively, like, you know, like multiple, uh, multiple, multiple flashes, multiple light points, and uh, gels and that type of stuff. Type in the comment here. Let me know if you, um, if you, which kind of flash you use. It's just for lighting, like lighting the scene. I think it was Rachel that said she used flash to, to on, on reception and stuff. It's just to light the scene, or you do something creative with the flash. Where are you taking the you taking the flash to the to the to the gigs, but what are you doing with this, right? How far are you pushing your skills to, to, to use Flash? Right? Because there's two ways of doing this. And I, I think, I, I was thinking about this last night. There is a little bit of a mind shift that, that needs to happen, a mindset shift that needs to happen when you start using Flash. Because I did a post on my, on my Instagram, and I think one of my last slides was about, um, my phone keeps dimming on me. So Rachel, lighting the scene mostly, I use it back light to light the right face for no gels. Yep, see, that, that, that's a great use for flash, right? You, you, you light from behind, you separate the, the, the subject from the scene, that type of stuff. But he, here's the question, there's way more that you can do with that, right? It's a great, it's a great way of using flash, but it's a, there's, there's more that can be done, and those are the things that, that uh, are going to separate you from everybody else. And this is what I'm excited about. We need to create this transformation in the industry that we're going to create this bunch of, of awesome, awesome photographers. And I'm here to help whenever, whatever you need, right? So uh, one of the things that I get asked a lot is about flash on the top of it. The, because there's so many choices out there. There's so much stuff that can be done, flash modifiers and all that type of stuff. Um, when I'm shooting receptions, for instance, or um, or a like last last week, so last weekend we got a wedding. This weekend we have a what is it? Is a graduation party, and then an, on Saturday, on Sunday we have an engagement session to do, um, and we we carry flash with us all over. So. It all depends on, on, on what you want, which kind of, you can make your pictures mood, you can change the mood of the scene by using flash, by lighting it correctly, by, you know, the shade, shadows. And one of the things that I see when people start working with me, uh, they're always afraid of embracing the shadows. You should start a hashtag, embrace the shadows, right? Uh, Rachel, yes, yeah, the thing I don't know well, honestly, but it's being asking best photographer for device that caused me to stop because of negative. Yeah, yeah, it, it is. There's this thing with flash photography that people just don't get it. Uh, uh, the ones who get it, that I think are better off. I don't know, but again, we need to say, um, uh, oh, you're welcome, Rachel. Um, we, we need to know when to use what. Like Jeff was saying at the wedding last weekend that we did, I, I shot natural light most of the time. Natural light is faster, yeah, but and the light was beautiful, was hitting well, and we just kept uh, 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 pushing pushing the scene the way, uh, the way we wanted, we were getting what we wanted. So um, a lot of times when, I, when, I'm, when I'm photographing, I'm using we, let's go back into the top of the, 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 the flash in the top of the camera. Because there's this thing that people ask, do I, should I use the flash in the top of the camera or not? If you shoot weddings, you know. If you shoot receptions, any kind of event, you know. That flash, I, I think flash in the top of the camera is a lifesaver. Honestly. Right? When I'm shooting weddings, I have my flash on the top of the camera. Where's my, so, where's my flash? It's over here. 
so I, I use this guy here. This is a Flashpoint, which is the same as the Goldox. It's just like branded by Adorama as Flashpoint. Again, I have no association with those companies. Everything that I, I use is like Flashpoint, right? I have this guy on the top of the camera over here. Just like this. Bouncing up, right? And I usually have a mag sphere on the top of it to make the light a little bit soft. This doesn't make the light extremely soft. Don't think this is gonna give you soft light or not, but it makes a little bit soft, it spreads the light a little bit over. And that's how we use for fuel light, right? Again, it all depends on how much ambient light you have. Sometimes you go to this vanish and it's pitch dark, and then I'm gonna spread a few of those units around the dancing floor maybe sometimes two or three, depending on how many, and I'm shooting crossed, right? So let's say the dancing floor, the dancing floor is over here, it's this piece of paper, right? I put one flash here and another one over here, and I'm shooting across, okay? Getting the lights, right? Sometimes if it's too dark, I put another one over here, right? And I'm shooting low, sometimes if I'm shooting against the light, if I'm shooting against the light, I, new, I, I go low to get the light behind them and create that beautiful uh, ring light around them as, as, we, as we do. So, simple setup, I have used four lights set up, it all depends on how much available light. And sometimes you have venues that uh, have huge windows, if the, if the ceremony is earlier, you have natural light coming in, you kind of balance your natural light with the flash. That's key, is the balance. Right? You don't want to shoot flash and people look at the picture and say, oh, he used flash over here. That tells you, oh, it's too much power or, or too much shadows, too much drama, right? So, and then you need to dial the mood of the flash and all that type, that type of stuff. Uh, these are things that we're gonna be talking about as we do this live because we're gonna be doing this every Monday and Wednesday at 8.08 .08 p.m., right? So there's a lot to be talked about. Um, and so we're gonna do that. I have used, uh, I'm gonna show you this. I have used this guy. This guy is the one I use the most. But I have also used this guy before. It's a mag bounce, right? Um, just think, think of a giant, like, bouncing card. That's pretty much what it is. Um, light gets here and goes to the front. I stopped using this because for me it's too directional. It creates too much light on the face. This is like, if this guy is not doing the job and I don't have any more to go, I will pull, pull this up. I'll pull one of those up and, and work with this a little bit. But I dial my camera set, my flash settings a little bit lower and, and, and use this guy. But I, I haven't used this in a while. And there's a little trick here that I use when I'm using this guy. I put it sideways and go like this. That's how I photograph this guy, put the flash sideways. Why? Because if I need to go vertical, I just do this. That's how I do, right? And if we have, let's say we have this way, the normal way, like most people do. If I go vertical here, now my light is, is sideways. It's not facing the front, okay? So put the flash sideways, and this guy has four magnets in it. And that's how it goes when you, so you shoot this way and you need to go vertical. That's all you need to do and go and you go back horizontal again. It's really quick changes and set up how you do that. Okay, so that's the, that's the value of, of, of flashing the top of the camera. And, and people really, I don't think people under, if people don't understand how it works. It's another thing that you can do if you have walls closed. You don't have to bounce from the ceiling all the time. If you want some directional light, just bounce it off the wall. You can even bounce off a glass wall. Also works. You'd be amazed how much this light travels. This can travel a long, long time. It, it, it really travels. So you don't need to be that close to get this guy um, to get this guy going, right? So you you. This, this is a very, very cool, quick, simple setup. And for anybody starting with flash right now, I would say start with one flash. Buy one flash, get used to it, learn how to use it, learn how to trigger it on, on camera, 
nothing like uh, nothing crazy don't go by like two three flashes and by off camera triggers and that type of stuff it just gets more complicated don't complicate it because there's a lot you can do with one i'm one light setup type of guy right we shoot webs we're running gunning we're going all over uh it's not a whole lot of time to be setting up like a bunch of a bunch of flashes there's really not a whole lot of time there so i i try to get everything close to perfection on camera with one light if that's not working then we bring another light but the, the primary goal is one light that, that that's my that's my thought when you have time you can experiment with two three light then you have to do with ratios and that type of stuff one light's going to get in the way of another and when you're doing weddings you don't have that time if you're doing and even like we're doing family photography you don't want to, to get your, your your clients like two three hours for you to figure out what the light's going to be at the end right um fabio just joined us say hey, fabio fabio's from brazil a friend of ours um so one flash first and, and, and if you want like an advice on, on, on how to choose, because there's so many out there, when you buy flash, buy into an ecosystem. Don't buy into one. Here's some people asking requests here. Oh, okay. Uh, don't buy into one single flash. It's like, and I did them, I made that mistake years ago with some of my, hey Fabio, boom. Uh, with some of my, in the beginning, like I said, I bought into the Yongnuo. It was a Chinese brand. It, it was good. It worked well for the time that it worked. But I think they made a mistake. They start coming up with so many different versions of the flash that, um, and they didn't talk to each other. They, 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 they didn't, they didn't really, you know, when I mean talk to each other, you couldn't use one to fire the other depending on which model you have. So if you have three lights and you have like one of each model, they wouldn't talk to each other. Uh, I remember at some point I was photographing with my camera and they have a trigger. Yeah, they had a trigger that, that had a hot shoe on it on the, top, the, on the top of it. So you could put another trigger or another flash on the top. So I remember one time I was photographing a wedding and I was like, I had my camera with with a battery grip it's not a small thing here but the camera itself is already heavy because it has a battery grip that holds two batteries here right and i have a 7200 which is a big lens heavy and i had one trigger one younger trigger and a flash on the top of it by the end of the day i was my arm was done i mean it was really really heavy set up and i didn't like that at all then uh, a little bit after that, the Godox came out, and that's when everything changed. So why why am I telling you to buy into a system? Because you start with one flash. That's that happens to everybody. You start with one flash, and when we you know what you're doing, you're gonna buy another one. This is fact. This is not this. This is fact. Everybody goes through that process. So you need to be thinking as I keep adding more and more flashes to my arsenal. I just think going to talk to each other. Or I need to buy different triggers. I need to buy different different type of gear to make it all work together. The cool thing about those guys is that they work as manual. They work as a slave. Meaning I can put this guy on a light stand and fire it remotely with this guy over here but they also work as a as a trigger to other flashes to control other flashes so i'm shooting the wedding i'm shooting wedding i have my trigger on the top of my camera makes it very light and i have my flash remote right so when i get to the reception i take one of this and i set up the flash around me how many i need and this guy on the top of my camera i go and control all the other ones so I, I ditch this guy over here, put this in the top of my camera, put this in group, and this guy controls everything else. Uh, uh, not only fire, fires and control everything else in the dancing floor. So that's how we get by with this. That's why we need to buy into the system because if I had another brand of flash, uh, uh, light in the dancing floor, this guy would not be able to, to, to fire it. So, this guy over here on the top of the camera with a with a mag sphere is working as a fuel flash 
my bride is dancing over here, I'm shooting the fuel flash, using this guy as a fuel, and all the, and this guy's controlling every other flash, they all firing at the same time, and that is really, really cool, that is really, really cool. Uh, I know I've been talking a lot, let me know if you have questions, just type them in there, but if you have comments, I mean, if you use flash in a different way, let us know, let us all learn together, right, we're all learning together here. Uh, let me know if you have questions or, or, or if you have any comment or anything like that. Don't, yeah, yeah, don't, 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 don't be shy. Just type it there, right? I have my cheating sheet here and technology is great, right? Because three minutes before I had it all typed on my laptop and three minutes before we started, my laptop just like shut down completely, like crap. <laughs> Uh, and I push, 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 push the button and, and it came back and I was like, I had to go upstairs and print it because it's going to die on me again for some reason, I don't know. Um, then we, we go from, as you get more, how, do one, how does one get over the obstruction of fear of using flash? That's a really good question. Um, the only way to get over the fear of using flash is by using flash. That's the only way. It, 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 there's not another way. You can read about it. You can you can do all of that thing. You can study. You can spend hours and hours and hours. But if you don't get it and buy it and put it on the top of the camera and see results, you're not gonna get it. It's a good. It, it, there are some few exercises that you can do to figure out how where to put the flash. Because once you get the flash on the top of your camera, is one thing, right? Here you are, you start bouncing and you bounce off the ceiling. By the way, one note about bouncing light, you're gonna bounce light if you have a white ceiling or white white walls or neutral gray, neutral gray flat. Because it's a, if you have like a green wall, you, you cast the green into your subject, right? Um, and the only way to get over the fear of it is by using it. You have to get one and just use it. Start making mistakes. Start making mistakes with it, and then you, you're gonna get it. It's not, once you get it, it's not that complicated. It's like riding a bicycle. It's like riding a bicycle, you know? It's hard in the beginning, and then you get it. Uh, once you get it, you never forget it. And speaking of riding bicycles, I have a, a, a cool story. I grew up in Brazil, and our, our family had three boys, and I, I'm the youngest one. My oldest brother is really tall. Uh, and he, my, my dad couldn't buy three bikes. He bought one bike, one, like one big tall bike. And I couldn't fit on the bike. I, I couldn't pedal all the way down. I couldn't learn the damn bike. And my dad came back and said, well, before you learning how to ride the bike, you need to learn how to fall. And I was like, okay. And he would like hold me on the bike and just let the bike go. And it would just like, bam, no, you need to put your leg here. And he would, I mean, it was painful, but you know, I went through it and I learned how to ride the bike. So flash, you're not gonna get hurt, but it is a process. It is a marathon, it's not a sprint. You, you have to get one and, 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 and keep trying it, you, you get it. And if you need a recommendation, you think, send me a DM, I will help you out with that. So Brandon, like for someone new to flash, so someone new to flash photography, what would be a simple basic tip you would give them to get them started on their own? Cool, great question. Um, I again buy one one flash. You start with one light, always start with one light. Put the flash on the top of the camera and you start playing with it. It's playing with the bouncing techniques, bouncing. Get a mannequin, get get a doll or something, put on the table, bounce it off the off the ceiling, bounce it to the side, see how the shadow is gonna affect. Because as you can see here, look, I have a light this side and a little less light this side, right? I have one light over here, one ring light over here on my right. And our house is all white, so light's bouncing like crazy here. So I have enough fuel light that's gonna so 
probably the ring light the ring light is actually pointing a little bit lower because we have I'm I'm, I'm literally on the kitchen in our house I'm, I'm living room kitchen we don't have walls here so I'm on the on the on the on the kitchen counter so I, I point the light a little bit lower so it hits the, the counter which is white and reflects light back on me and wraps around a little bit so when you're shooting off the ceiling we will go back there and create that big natural uh, uh, that big uh, soft light because the ceiling is big, right? And you come back with we'll light well. When you start pointing it, you start giving you this effect here, right? Light on one side and less light on the other side. If that's too much, you need to look at the picture. Is that too, if that is too much of drama, right? So you just bring the light back a little bit. The light will wrap around. I think that is the way to start with one light. Everything starts with one light. When I'm shooting, I always set up one light at a time, one in the front, one in the back, one for hair light, all that type, one at a time, so you can see how they, they affect each other, okay? Yeah, 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 go practicing, I mean, practice is everything, and I'll tell you a story about practicing, and let me, show, let me show you an image, let me put an image up here, and talk a little bit about the image, hold on a second, this image here. Can you see it? Let me know if you can see it. You probably have seen this picture before. Let me know if you can see that image if I, before I start talking about it. It's my first live, so I don't know what works and what doesn't work in this thing. Can you guys see the, the image? Okay, cool. Uh, that image there, we're shooting this wedding in Virginia in December, a few years back. And everybody knows Virginia in December is extremely cold, extremely cold. And this bride came to us because of my of our photography. She's like, I want you guys to shoot a wedding because your work is so different, so unique. And I, and I told her, you're going to be in Virginia, it's going to be cold. Uh, she said, it doesn't matter, I will do whatever I need to do. Okay, cool. I will shoot your wedding. So we went to Virginia and, we, and her dad was the officiant for the, for the wedding. It was supposed to be a 15, 20 minutes, half an hour max reception, uh, a ceremony. And he, uh, dad gets emotional and just keeps talking and talking and talking, just like I'm talking now. He couldn't stop. He would just go talking and talking and talking. And I'm watching this, it's like good half an hour is over, 45 minutes is gone. And he keeps talking, I'm like, oh boy, this is not cool. So we had gone there before and scout the air. I knew everywhere I was going to shoot. When the ceremony finished, it was pitch dark outside. I was like, oh boy. So I opened the door, it was dark. Was, I couldn't see anything. So I closed the door, told Danny, keep them here because I need to come up with a plan B. This is when being bilingual helps a lot because it's totally in Portuguese. Keep them here because it's pitch dark, I have no idea what I'm gonna do. I will come back and get you guys. So, hop into my car and start driving around. And I saw this big, big, big area, open area. I put the headlights on and I said, this is gonna be a good place for portraits, right? Um, went back there, got the couple, we had a blanket for her, she's right in, so I'm, we are photographing and everything's going all right. I have the headlights of the car on, but the car's far away, the headlights on, just to throw a little bit of light on them because it was so dark, the camera couldn't see them and the camera wasn't focusing. So I had a little bit of light on them. Uh, so in the shooting, everything's going fine. We're having fun, we're flying. She had like a long uh, cathedral veil. We're flying the veil, everything's going okay. And then it starts raining. And it, it does start raining. I was like, oh my goodness. I literally look at this, this guy and said, what else are you going to throw at me tonight, right? Uh, and so the bride at that point said, well, it's raining, we're done, right? I said, mm, there's one more, one more picture I want to do. Uh, she said, but it's raining. I said, well, just wait. Um, got my photography umbrella. That's, a, that's my photography umbrella that is reflective on the inside. He is holding a speed light just like this one on his right hand pointing up to the umbrella. The light goes up 
and comes back. The first shot I had, I had her kissing him on the other side. Her dark came, her face came dark. Okay, let's split her face to the other side. So the light he is holding goes up, hits the umbrella, comes back and light them. And I have another light about 10 feet behind them just to light the rain and light the and create the, the, the back light to separate them from from the from, from, from the darkness on the back. That was a true light setup. It took me probably five, 10 minutes max to dial everything and shoot and create that image that you should never, ever, ever expect to get. I could have walked away at that point and said, okay, now it's raining, all right, let's go. And she would be fine. But like I was talking talk earlier, Rachel, uh, that's how you take to the next step. What, what flash allows me to do that natural light would never be able to do. If I shot only natural light on that, on that day, I was out of luck. I would have to shoot all the portraits inside the reception area because there was no light at all out, outdoors. So that's, that's what happened. But the big story here is that, because I keep talking about practice, right? I studied the, the technique. I read about it. I watched videos about it. And I had it up here. I had it up here. One year before that wedding, we got a, and I was praying to get a wedding when it was going to rain. I said, oh, we need a wedding that's going to rain. I'm going to do this. It's going to be different. It's going to be beautiful. Uh, uh, this is another one. That's another one that has the same technique. Um, and I said, it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be cool and, and, and everything. But I never practiced. I knew it. I knew it in the top of my head. So I know how I'm going to do it. And I was... And we went to shoot this wedding in Asheville, outdoors in the botanical garden, beautiful place, and it starts raining. What happened? We go inside and do what we had to do inside, indoors. And the wedding ended. Halfway driving back home, I was like, oh, that moment I've been waiting for so long with the rain in an outdoor wedding just happened and I didn't. Take advantage of it. That bugged me so much, so much, that I could not understand why I didn't do it. I, I didn't even remember. It's not that I didn't do it because I didn't know how to do it. I had studied the technique. I knew how to do it. I watched videos. I read about it. But it's not on my, on my, on my bag of tricks, right? So all of this I'm talking to you about, Knowing how to do it, reading about it. Thank you. Thank you. Ed, that's a beautiful picture. I love it. Um, knowing about it, reading about it, watching videos about it, it is not enough. It needs to be on your bag of tricks. You need, it needs to be one of those things that you're just waiting to happen before you go there to do. You know what to do it, right? So on that second way, on that, on that dark picture, on that black and white picture that I showed you, um, uh, I already had come back home, practice, and the way I practice, I would open the taps inside the house and put a flash behind it and start photographing it to see what was happening, right? I got, I think I got Danny outside, like we holding an umbrella. I had like a, a hose on the top. Then that's what it takes. And that kind of picture, you don't even need to have a whole lot of rain in it. We have done the same, the same thing with like just a mist. Right, it is, it is, it creates something that your clients are gonna go, wow, wow. So it, it, it is, is that what flash photography can do for you that natural light will not be able to do for you, right? That type of things. So uh, there is a lot of resources out there that teach how to do that. And I, I will, I will, like I said, we're gonna be doing this live every Monday and Wednesday at 4, uh, 4, 4 8, 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern time, and I, I'm going to be showing you techniques that I use, like how should ring. How, I mean, everything that I use on my on my on my photography, on my daily photography, uh, uh, I'm going to show you how to do that, and that's going to be one of the pictures I want. I want you guys to try it because once you get it, it's so beautiful, and you ju you just you, you're going to be praying to get a wedding in the rain. And we have brides. So that picture is is back here somewhere uh, um, because that's where we see our clients here. We have brides that come here and see that picture and they go like, 
oh man, it all make, almost makes me want to rain on my wedding day just to get one of those pictures, right? And I go like, no, you don't want to rain on a wedding day. But if it does ha happen, we're going to be there to create that type of stuff. How Now you tell me, how does a bride that sees that picture have that type of conversation with you and you, 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 and you, can, you tell her, I guarantee you that I have your back even if it rains and you show that picture and she loves it. How is that bride not going to hire you? There's no way she will hire you because now she's not more concerned about pricing anymore. At that point, she wants you to do her wedding because she knows that you are the guy, you are the girl who can deliver in any, any, any situation. And this is what flash photography does for us. We are able to deliver in any situation, but we need to lose the fear. We need to go out and practice and just keep practicing and practicing and practicing because like I said, it's, it, it's, it's, like, it's like it's a marathon. It's not a sprint and it, 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 you're going to make mistakes and mistakes happen. And, and, and speaking of mistakes, let me show you another picture. Brandon, I'm going to show you a picture, Brandon. What is it? Final. That, that's, look at that picture. Is that the final? Yeah, that's the final. I posted that, that, that I posted the lighting setup for that picture yesterday on this account. So if you go back to the feed, you're gonna see that. That picture starts as a mistake, right, Brandon? That's a, a Brandon and Amber engagement session in Charleston, like about a few weeks back, a few weeks back. That picture starts as a mistake because what I would really want to do like was a silhouette. <laughs> Good looking couple, my man. Um, I want to do a silhouette. This was like, if you go through the feed, you're gonna see the the, 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 the the scene. This was like a little bit after lunch break. It was like full day, like, I mean, it was hot, it was a hot day, and they braved, I mean, Brandon's wearing like long sleeve, and they braved through the heat. And this picture started as a, as a mistake. Like I point the flash to the wall, but I couldn't get enough power. I had a 200, I had an AD 200, what is it? I have one over here. I had one of those, which by the way, this is 50 watts, this is 200 watts. That's the only difference. There's no difference at all. Same light, same quality of light, same thing. This just was like four times more power than this one here. That's all. So I had one of those. Brand was holding it, pointing to the wall, to the door, and the door was sucking, was just sucking that the light wasn't coming back to them because the door is brown, like dark brown, was just not reflecting the light. And actually it was Brandon who said, well, let's put it standing, let's see, right? Like I said, Brandon is a great photographer in, in Washington, D.C., so check him out. Uh, so he put it standing and I took the shot and I look at it and I saw that the light hit the, the, the top you know, the, the greenery on the top a little bit. I was like, well, we up to something here. We do something here. So, and we just went back there. I went back there and just moved the flash back a little bit. And that's what we got. And this, guys, is really, really, really... I, I mean, if you go to the feed, you're going to see this straight out of the camera. That's the final edited version. But I think I have it here. I can show you. Uh, What is it? Out of the camera. This is what came out, out of the camera, right there. You see, that's not much different from, from what we had. So if you go to the feed, I, 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 I show you step by step how I create this. Danny, my wife, is holding one of these guys over here like this with a, a sphere in it. She's holding it to bring some light into them. They were still a little bit dark, but I was like, okay, we can handle that in Photoshop. But that was like, literally, I didn't spend more than 20 minutes to make that image the way I wanted it to the end. So the point that I'm bringing here, let's, we, we, are not, we are photographers, we're not photoshoppers. We know Photoshop and Photoshop should enhance, enhance our vision, enhance what we create, not create magic for us. And that's exactly, that's a perfect example of, of what it is. The picture came pretty much ready to go. 
I just did some dodge and burning on the bottom, on, on, the, on, the, on the ground there. I just did a little bit of, of, of dodge and burning on their faces. And I, I think I increased the, 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 the I think I increased the, the, the greens, on, not the greens, but um, yeah, I did some dodging on the, on the greenery because I thought it was too dark. And boom, that's it, so like 20 minutes and the picture was ready, right? Now, tell me which bride and groom don't want that picture hanging on their wall. Really, I mean, there's no way. So, that's the thing. So, take, take, take your chance. If you're already using flash to light scenes, take your chance. Take it to the next level. Throw some gels in there. Start experimenting with this, right? Create some magic. Uh, create some magic. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Uh, Hey, Fernando. How's it going? Very good. Where are you guys today? Those folks are traveling oh, the country. Yeah. Are you yeah. back home? Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Good to see right. you, brother. Right. Okay. Good to see you. Yeah, but I don't know how to ask you out of that. You may no, have maybe a, I should try myself. So, uh, uh, if you're using Flash to light, now it's time for you to start thinking about using Flash creatively. How, how to... Fernando, can you X out for us? I'm trying. <laughs> I don't think I can do on my end. There you go. Thank you. Uh, Guarantee no one shot that spot like that. Differentiate the light. The door has probably been shot a million times. That's true. That is true. How, how, this is how you, you get to a scene that, I mean, Charleston is such a beautiful place. There's so many, there were so many photographers on the street that day. They were all over the place, right? And I, I didn't even show you the ones that we went, and then we went to the, we, we went to the Driftwood Beach. It's just like beautiful, gorgeous, gorgeous pictures. Um, but yeah, but that 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 that's how you get into that niche that people want want you for your pictures. And I'm going to bang on this again. We keep saying that the market saturated, the market saturated. And I ask you again, what are you doing? Are you you you're just like sitting down and wait for the map, the market to unsaturate? Has always been like that. Why some people stand out and others don't? I mean, there's got to be something, and I bet you it's the imagery. And I'm not saying that natural light, again, that natural light is not, it's not, it's not, it's not beautiful. It is. But you got to start thinking. If you're struggling right now, you know, to get clients, and if you get those, uh, um, if you get inquiries and people are not closing, you need to look at your process and you look at your image, look at the whole thing as a, as a, as, as a whole, right? Don't think, don't blame everything on the picture. I think we need to stop also the mindset, like stop thinking of what we don't have and start focusing on what we have, right? So uh, uh, we, we focus a lot on what we don't have and we need to focus on what we have and what can we do with what we have instead of saying, oh, I can't do this because I don't have that. Well, do something else with what you do. It's not that complicated. Um, so we talk about flash for beginners. We talk about uh, uh, bouncing techniques. We talk about uh, flash at the top of the camera. Um, let me show you guys something that just arrived now. I, I'm just looking at this and I, I gotta show you this. Look how cute that is. I found this company in Canada. They do those stickers that you put on the, on the, on the cap of your lens. This is great because you can spot, I mean, I put everything in the same place always, uh, so I know where every lens are in my bag, but when you have an assistant, an assistant sometimes doesn't know. It's very cool, and, and they look really good. I love it. I love it. It's a company in Canada that made this very cheap. It's just a sticker. You take it out and put it on the top of the camera. Put the camera right there, and you know which lens you have. That's very cool. So, um, let me show, I got a few more here that I want to talk about real quick. So another thing, another way to do flash different, look at that image, right? That's St. Louis, we did a, a, a we were a Shutterfest 
over there and I took this couple to do some off-site shooting and you create that picture. Yeah, there was a company in Canada that, that, that did, I bought this sticker from. I didn't even know they were from Canada. Uh, so that picture there was great, same thing. Dark in the background. There's a pattern, right? If you look, there's a pattern. Dark in the background. Because your eyes go to the brightest part of the image. If your background is competing in luminosity, which is like amount of light with the subject, people are going to look at it and they're going to go like, okay, where, 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 where does my eye go? Because it's one luminosity through the whole thing. So... When you're shooting with flash, you can't create those dimensions. You can't highlight what you want and, and, and hide what you don't want, right? So a perfect example of this, wedding photographers, we've been in this situation over and over and over again. Do I have the image here? Oh, I don't. I don't. Forgot to put it here, sorry. I'll show you another day uh, wh how, you, how you can, uh, uh, when you're doing getting ready, how you can um, um, hide things from the room, right? You have the room that's messy. Every, every getting ready room is messy. And you're not, you're not there to clean up room for the bride, right? How can you hide? You hide some stuff with, with, with dark in the background. You, you highlight some stuff with flash. I mean, that, that, this, is, this is key. This is key. This is what the type of thing that we do that, that create that, that, that difference thing. And I want, I want to talk quickly about something, and I want to show you this picture. I want to show you two pictures. One is this one here. Can you see that picture? This, again, is sort of fast. Sort of fast is a, is a, a, a photography a, a, a workshop. And every time I'm a sort of fast, I make a group of people and we go out of sight shooting. This, this picture was taken five in the morning, I guess, at sunrise. I think it was five in the morning, around five or thirty in the morning. It was freezing. That bride over there is actually my wife, Danny. <laughs> we were uh, ready to get out to shoot and the model that's supposed to model for us called and said she was sick shooter, not going to make it. And I had about 20 people already ready to go. And I said, Danny, it's going to be you. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, and she did beautifully, Danny and Anthony. Uh, and you create that image. You see that orange back there? What we did with that picture, we did something that's called a white balance shift. The sunrise is orange, but it's not that orange, right? So this is another thing that you can only do with flash photography. So we dark the scene, because there's a lot of light, the sun is rising. We dark the scene, right, closing the aperture. And we dial the white balance in our camera, in putting Kelvin, and dial all the way up to 10,000 Kelvin, right? That means that everything on the scene is going to be orange, more orange than what it is. So Kelvin, um, you can dial to warm the picture or to cool the picture. But when you dial up, everything on the scene is going to be orange, including the subjects, right? So what you do to balance that, you use a blue gel on your flash. You get one of those guys here. It's called a CTB, color temperature blue. To cancel out... I have one here somewhere. I know I do. I try to keep this organized by colors. But that's, you know, that's the type of person I am. So you get one of those, right? A color temperature blue gel and put it in a flash because the camera now is going to make everything orange. But this guy on your subject is going to cancel out the orange and make the skin tone go back to the natural colors. 
because the blue cancels the orange, right? So it's called a white balance shift. Not every camera can do that. The professional cameras can't do that. I don't think amateur cameras can do white balance. Uh, they don't have white balance. But that's another thing that you can do. So white balance shift, right? You get your Kelvins and go your Kelvins all the way up to uh, as high as you can go. This is 10,000, right? Sometimes if there's some orange, you can go 8,000, warm up the picture as you want. And then you put a blue gel on your flash and the skin tones of your subject are gonna come back to normal. But what I, the reason I'm showing you this, you can go the other way around also. As you, as you can warm up the scene with, with the, the orange gel, you can cool it down with blue gel. Let me show you this one which was taken, this one. You see that blue sky there? It was taken like 10 minutes after the other one. It was taken like 10 minutes after that other orange picture. In this case, I went different. The Kelvin that was all the way to 10,000, I brought it down to 3,500 or something like that, I guess. And then I used an orange gel to light the subject because otherwise, because I, I cooled down the picture, everything was gonna be blue. They're, they're gonna be just like Smurfs on the picture, right? Then we use the, use the orange gel to bring the color temperature back on the skin again and to normal. And there you go. There's a white balance shift can go both ways. Now we made a picture that was taken like five or six in the morning during sunrise looked like night. Of course, I talk too much. Um, even Instagram knows that now because they kicked me out after one hour. I didn't know there was a limit. This is my first live. I'm sorry. I apologize, guys. But this, this is what I want to talk to you about. And... You know, just put that little seed in your, in your mind, in your head, and get you guys thinking about photography. How we can, by using flash, you can layer your pictures. You can hide un unwanted stuff, and we can uh, highlight some parts of the picture that you want, right? I mean, that that's beautiful. That's what creates unique stuff that's gonna bring that client that you always look for, the ones that, um, pay for our work, not because of the cheapest one out there. Nobody wants to be the cheapest one out there, right? Um, no, you don't want to compete on that, on that. You don't want to play on that pool that's like a bunch of people in it. And don't get me wrong, that's how we started. But at some point you realize that doesn't work. Competition, uh, uh, if you compete on price, it's a competition to the bottom and you, you don't want that, right? <clears throat> guys, I really, truly, truly appreciate you guys being here today, uh, supporting us on this new uh, endeavor. It's been, it's been fun. It's been a lot of work. We've been posting. We started this new Instagram. Uh, and I wish uh, that you guys take this information and go with you and, and just go with it, right? Start experimenting, start making mistakes, start practicing, you know, get a model, get a mannequin, get a mannequin head, put it on the top of the table and just play with it. You're going to find that when you make mistakes, great things happen when you make those type of mistakes. So uh, do you guys have any questions or anything that you want to share about business or, or, or anything um, um, that you you think would be valuable to this to this life or any experience with other people i told my stories do you have any story to tell us um, or you have any questions for me i think i, I think i talk I, I i i talk like enough content for three lives i need to time this better <laughs> I'll get there. I'll get there. Well, thank you so very much for listening. Thank you so very much for staying here, for coming back after the glitch. Uh, I really, truly, truly appreciate it, guys. You guys were awesome. Um, no.
No, 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 uh, uh, Rachel, I said the other, the other way. So I said, stuck with the same, with the same brands, so these things can talk to each other. Does that make sense, or am I, am I misreading your question? Because let's say if I have one of these guys, Flashpoint, and I have a Yugen over there, and I have a Ken over there, that is not going to talk to each other. I'm sorry if I, if I, if I misspoke or, or, or wasn't clear or not. These guys, they should, be the, they, they should be the same brand, so they talk to each other, and it makes your life much, much easier, tell you. I've been through this, and, and it's like, it's hard. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry you got confused. Yeah. Probably my accent that just makes things confusing. But uh, if you want to know what I use, let me know and I will send me a DM and I will tell you the brands that I use and everything that my setup can show you. We can talk offline uh, anytime. And if you guys have any questions, you guys can think about anything else. I know it's hard on the spot right there. Um, if you guys can, if you guys can. Uh, uh, um, come up with questions and things like that that we talked about. Anything photography really, not just flash, but anything photography. I try, I want to focus this on flash because I think it's a big pain for photographers. So, and I want to help everybody to get over that hurdle and, and start creating some beautiful art. Thank you guys so very much. I really, really appreciate it. And I hope to see you on Wednesday um, at 8.08. Let's start that hashtag 808 with Clay. Uh, and tell your friends if you enjoyed this tell your friends if you didn't like it talk to me if you liked it tell your friends and bring them over let's get that feed going uh, asking questions I'll keep posting every day like I've been doing uh, for this past two weeks and we go from there thank you so much I hope to see you here on Wednesday again at 8 or 8 p.m. Eastern Time bye